Washington Post columnist Mark Thiessen, he wrote an op-ed that was talking about a bit of the struggles that both Vice President Kamala Harris and President Joe Biden are having with some poll numbers. We've been hearing about this a lot lately. Um, but he does wrap up his op-ed with a bit of advice for the two of them and actually for the Democratic Party about what they should do going forward. Now, don't forget, for those of you who don't know who Mark Thiessen is, he's a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. He's a former chief speechwriter for W. Bush, um, and he's also a Fox News contributor. So keep all that in mind as we go into some of these points that he has to make. So he writes, it's hard to screw up being vice president, but after, uh, after just 10 months in office, Kamala D. Harris has managed to make herself the least popular vice president at this point in at least 50 years. President Biden's approval has plummeted to just 36% in the recent Quinnipiac poll, but Harris's popularity is even worse. In a recent poll that put Biden's popularity at a measly 37.8%, Harris ran 10 points lower at 27.8. Those are depths of unpopularity even Trump never plumbed. Plummeted too, I assume, but maybe plumbed. Uh, usually, he continues on, usually a vice president's poll numbers don't matter that much. But with Biden struggling in the polls, Harris is supposed to be the Democrats' backup plan for 2024. If this many Americans have lost confidence in the president's cognitive abilities after just 10 months of watching him in action, Imagine what it'll be like in three years when he has to stand for re-election. So I just want to stop for a second and just point out a little bit of the, of course, this is an op-ed, it's an opinion piece, so you can expect this type of stuff. But he was saying if people have lost this much confidence in Biden and his cognitive abilities based on what? It's still an opinion piece, but I figure your opinion has to be based off something. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious what point he got that, uh, that piece of information about the reasons why his poll numbers are that low is because of people's loss of his loss of, uh, uh, of confidence in his cognitive abilities. Continuing on, so the jockeying to replace Biden has already begun. And that means the knives have come out for Harris with rivals and their supporters planning hit pieces on their own in the media. Democrats spent the entire 2020 primary season searching for an acceptable alternative to Biden and could not find one. They ultimately settled on him because he was, quote, least the least bad choice. Again, what's a primary do? A primary is there to find out the person you wanna have as the, the candidate for the party. Um, again, it's posed as they're looking for someone because they just had to settle on Biden. Now, many of us thought they did settle on Biden, but that wasn't a, a, a collective thought process for the entire party and the entire process. A primary includes a bunch of people that ran and everyone <laughs> loses except for one candidate. So continue on, just keeping all that in mind. Well, less than a year into his presidency, Biden's popularity is in free fall. His vice president and presumed heir is less popular than he is, and there's still no viable alternatives. Most of the potential 2024 candidates being discussed are, 20, are 2020 also rands who failed to connect with voters in the Democratic primaries. Um, so, um, He's also talking about legislation and they're not part of the things that they're not part of. Here, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who's again, he also ran for president as we know, is trying to raise his profile by taking false credit for the Biden administration's one popular achievement, which is the passage of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. But Buttigieg had literally no role in negotiating the infrastructure, none. So now to his winning strategy after all these problems, lower poll numbers, a bunch of losers in the primary that couldn't get by Joe Biden who has cognitive issues. Lastly, if Democrats want to dig themselves out of the political hole that they're in, maybe they should turn to the two leaders of their party who did not run in 20 and are actually responsible for the bill's passage. Uh, that's Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema for 2024. Now that's a Democratic ticket that would terrify the GOP. Because you know, Mark Thiessen wants to talk about uh, primaries that, uh, or at least tickets that the Democrats can run that would terrify the GOP because that's what he's interested in. Yeah, all right. So a uh, bunch of comments here. The last thing is the most important. It's the cinema mansion tickets, hilarious. We'll come back to that. Um, so Trump's polls also dropped. Uh, did Mark Thiessen or anyone else write a story about, Oh well, that must mean it's because Trump has lost his cognitive abilities. He's obviously senile. Nobody wrote that piece, but his poll numbers dropped more than Biden's did. Okay, so just making stuff up. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, number two. Um, uh, there, there are parts of the piece that are not wrong. The uh, poll numbers did drop. I think Biden and Harris are in trouble. They are infighting, which is so dumb. Jesus, that's dumb to hit each other in the press when the Republicans are hitting you all over the place anyway. Progressives are not happy with you, and then you two start fighting. That's I can't fathom how dumb that is. Uh, and then on Buttigieg, 
See, this is a, a good case of whether you're being intellectually honest or not, right? So I don't like Buttigieg at all. I think he's a, a you know corporate Barbie and and just or corporate Ken, I should say in this case, <laughs> and uh, and he's just a come cut out cardboard McKinsey clone. It, and that's why the donors love him. That's why he got transportation secretary because they knew they were going to pass an infrastructure bill, and so he would seem like the hero, right? Um, but at the same time, when Thiessen says. Oh, Buttigieg couldn't win in the last primary, so he's eliminated. Nah, Thiessen doesn't believe that. No. He knows that the first time you run, especially as a rinky dink mayor of a rinky dink town in the middle of the country, you're not gonna win. You're setting yourself up for a second run after you've got name recognition or maybe even a third run. And Thiessen knows that. So when he says, oh, Buttigieg is eliminated, I mean, I hope he's right because I don't like Buttigieg. <laughs> he's not my wing of the Democratic Party. But he's lying, he's being intellectually dishonest. He knows that's not how politics works and he said it in the piece even though he knows it. So understand who he is, okay? But most importantly, Cinema and Mansion. So look guys, there's two, there's two parts of this that uh, is very DC. One is a Republican telling Democrats, "Oh boy, we would be really terrified if you picked the two worst candidates. <laughs> Don't do it, don't do it. Wink, right? Oh, thank you. We'll take it under advisement, okay? And number two, there is a part of it that is the people in DC, they love corporate Democrats and corporate Republicans so much that they, some of them, I don't know if Thesis is in this camp, but some of them genuinely believe it. They think, I love Mansion and Cinema for protecting corporate donors so much. I think they're the best at protecting corporate donors. So I bet the country would love them. They genuinely think that when the rest of the country hates these two. There's not a single <laughs> Republican who's gonna vote for these two over a Republican. Anyone who thinks otherwise is a moron, doesn't know a single thing about politics and should go be a plumber, okay? And in terms of the Democrats, how are they gonna <laughs> win a Democratic primary when they're the most conservative Democrats? And in the corporate press protected Joe Biden like he was a little baby. They never talked about his record, which was terrible and very conservative, right? But with Manchin and Cinema, we all already know they're the most conservative Democrats, which gives them an approximately 0% chance of winning the Democratic primary because you you cannot win it without corporate media protection and and already they've been exposed it's too late to protect them they can't win in a democratic primary anyone with any degree of knowledge in politics would know that that's why this is a hilariously disingenuous article jackson yeah i think you know, circling back around to Kamala Harris, and this is something that I talk about often, is that she's really, really blown her opportunity to be a historic figure in a lot of ways. You know, simply not outside of just the Democrats' you know typical lackluster approach to policy implementation. Kamala Harris is the first Black woman to hold the position, and she actually has, whether you like her or not, a strong presence. She has the ability to capture attention. She has the ability to be on the forefront. And with Joe Biden not really having that type of charisma and presence, just in a sense of the Democrats positioning themselves to really do well in 2022 and 2024. And, you know, for Kamala Harris to continue whatever legacy Biden had, she's simply not being seen. She's nowhere to be found. And when she is found, she's telling people not to come to the country. And, you know, and as you pointed out, just ridiculously, you know, her staff and Biden staff are feuding with each other this early on into the presidency. So, you know, in my view, you, you know, when it comes to keeping any type of, you know, semblance to progressive policies moving forward, moving into 2024, as we've been talking about, you got people like Pete Buttigieg who might run or, you know, Bernie's not running again and God knows who else might present themselves to run. Kamala Harris really should be the person who's electrified the country, whether it be just women she could inspire, black women she could inspire, the Democratic Party, loyal Democratic voters. But she simply just is nowhere to be found. And we know that we live in a time where personality and presence is extremely important. It always has been, but especially now. And now that the infrastructure bill has been knocked down so low and the Democrats haven't done things or moved to legalize marijuana or really do anything about student loan debt or anything of that type of significance, they're gonna lose the House and the Senate in 2022 more likely than not. So she's not gonna have any type of ammunition to really go into 2024 
getting anybody excited. So if she would just simply put, you know, show herself, that would make a huge difference. But the, the clock kind of has already ticked for that. I got a couple of thoughts on that stuff because look, well, first I'll go to Thiessen's piece because I think it's a bit of a joke piece. And he, and I think he was kind of even putting it out that way. It's like, okay, after writing op ed, I have these thoughts. Oh, let's talk about the fledgling poll numbers. Let's talk about what they could do. He doesn't really believe that Joe Manchin and the Kirsten Cinema should be the ticket for Democrats in 24. He doesn't really think that. That's like a kicker at the end of the line if you go through your whole piece. And you're right, here's the joke at the end so everybody can laugh who's in support of what he's saying and also is in opposition for Democrats. So, and by the way, more power to you. You can have joke op eds all you want. It doesn't bother me. Just say what. You can say what you want, that's not a thing. But I'm just pointing out that that's what this was. There's not a serious thought process in this. Mark Thiessen, as we talked about, his pedigree, he knows what he knows the background, he knows how DC works, he knows how politics work, and he knows that, that none of that makes any sense. That anybody's ever been in a primary and lost, never runs for president again, or else they're useless. So are you not supporting Donald Trump? Because he just lost. Anyway. Um, Great point. <laughs> outside of right. all of that, um, then just the, the, the you talked about, uh, 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 Jackson, about how Kamala had this fire and this charisma and this personality, and we don't see it. Now, I don't know how the inner workings of these types of things work, but she went and cut up Biden in one of those debates. Remember, that was one of the biggest moments of all the primary. And then now she's on his, with his, as his running mate. Were they really ever on the same page? Were they ever really gonna be able to work together? And how much do vice president and president really work together? There's different offices, they're in different parts of the whole city, right? And they're, they have different approaches to what they're doing. And I feel like she's being a bit, Overhandled, and we know all politicians are, but she's been a bit overly handled where who she is isn't being seen, and that's hurting her. Yeah, mm -hmm. one more thing here. Uh, so, um, George H. W. Bush had a great line about being vice president. It's supposed like in the old days, it was just ceremonial. You really didn't do anything other than uh, decide elections if you believe Trump uh, <laughs> unilaterally <laughs> by yourself. Um, but no, uh, H.W. had a line, he said, Look, all I ever did was attend funerals. So you fly, I, uh, he said, you die, I fly. Okay, that, that was HW. HW, yeah, yeah when yeah. he was vice president for uh -huh. Ronald Reagan, right? Uh, it's a hilarious line, <laughs> you die, I fly. Um, but now uh, Dick Cheney was the president <laughs> for about six years of George W. Bush's uh, presidency. And, and Biden claimed that he had a big role in the Obama administration. That was at most a quarter true, but still, right? Uh, and so Pence had no role in the Trump administration. Let's keep it real. <laughs> um, but for Harris, I don't. I think fighting in public is probably a very bad idea, right? But if you're gonna fight, don't do a cat fight over nothing. And oh my God, they protected Buttigieg, but they didn't protect me, and they gave me the bad assignments, and I'm crying about that publicly. Are you nuts? That's what I'm wondering. I'm sorry. Because you were talking about how they're fighting in public, going back and forth. I remember the leaking of potentially her offices in turmoil and all that stuff. Who came up with that? But she's openly saying, "Hey, Biden had this issue." Because I saw no, the headline no, about no, no. this, and but it's but rejecting. Jr. Jr. It's it's almost openly mm -hmm. because CNN had a very long piece where they're quoting her top advisors, her top allies, yeah. and they say there's a lot more people in Kamala's camp that they talk to, and they are clearly leaking to CNN and the press. That Biden is favoring Buttigieg and and For his. throwing her under the bus, mm -hmm. okay? And that's a form of crying out, you know, publicly. But if you're gonna fight Biden, your own president, don't do it on petty crap. Say, you know what? I'm a historic vice presidential pick. Joe Biden deserves all the President Biden deserves all the credit in the world, and I was picked to fight for voting rights. And we're gonna pass mm -hmm. voting rights, and I'm gonna make sure they're gonna yeah. kill the filibuster so we can pass voting rights. Well, you know what, mm -hmm. then at least you'd be a hero whether you won or you didn't. And at least then the public fight would be worth it, because you'd be trying to get something really important passed. And then you'd get a lot of people on your side. But she doesn't have any sense, and besides which she doesn't care about policy. For them, it's all just super silly, ego-driven, Personal politics. What happened to me? What happened to Buttigieg? What happened to Biden? So and all weird. the stupid drama around it. Because corporate Democrats don't care about the voters. They can't stand their base and they don't really want to deliver on any policy. That's the real underlying problem. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get 
playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.